Um, so first super chat, Doug Tipton, has Urban or any other coach pissed you off so bad you wanted to fight him? Absolutely. Man, man. Absolutely. We need a story on it then. There's so I mean I, I could, I'll tell I'll tell a couple but there's so many times I wanted to punch Urban right in his fucking mouth so many times because he talks so tough but he like he's just, he's a whatever 55 year old man like talking to me and I'm like I will knock your bitch ass out like what do you don't don't talk to me like that and uh, the the two times the one time I've told this story before I'll tell it again we were on the field in 2012 Braxton's the quarterback we have crowd noise pumping on the speakers right you can barely hear somebody right next to you. And Braxton called an audible, but when you call an audible at quarterback, you have to signal to the receivers what you what you change the play to, right? And he changed changed the play to and, and wanted a bubble screen from the receivers, but he never told them. And so when he snapped the ball, they ran off the ball and were blocking for the run play that was originally called. And Urban lost his shit, and he's screaming at me. And I looked at him and I was like, coach, he didn't signal it to the wideouts. Like, I'm looking at him, like, why the fuck are you yelling at me? Go get it fixed. Like, yelling at me is not going to do anything. But he was such a pussy about dealing with quarterbacks, especially Braxton, because Braxton was a great player. And he didn't, he wanted to scream at Braxton, but he knew that wouldn't be a good idea, you know, for the for Braxton's performance sake. So he's screaming at me and my players. And I'm looking at him like, you're going to lose these kids because you're yelling at them for something they didn't do wrong. And I looked at him, I said, coach, he didn't signal it. And he got like, Two feet away from me, he was like, I swear to God, you fucking talk, talk back to me like that. I will fucking, like, strangle you. And I looked at him. I was like, strangle who? <laughs> like, wh what are you talking? Like, we can end this practice right now. Who the fuck are you strangling, old man? The fuck out of here. And then the other time was when he called me a, uh, I, I don't know if I should say no, it. No, don't say it. He monetized me. He called me the C word. He called me the C word. Corey Dennis, I, he was, he was working out. We went up. He was all pissed off at, the, at Greg Schiano and the defense. But he, he didn't want to yell at Greg Schiano. That's his buddy, right? He hired Greg Schiano and put him on a pedestal. So he didn't want to just destroy Greg, even though he's pissed at him. So he had to destroy someone. Guess who that someone was? It was me. So he, he destroyed me and Corey Dennis, his son-in-law. I mean, destroyed us. Called me the C word. Told Corey, you know, he, he's fired. And he's like, how am I supposed to think about this? You think it's bad? You're fired. I have to tell my daughter that she's <laughs> married to a loser. And I'm like, oh, my God. And so I, I wanted to just fucking knock him off the treadmill so bad. But I'm not a violent person, Chris, so I didn't either. And there's, I mean, there's other times too that, that I've wanted to fight a coach. It's a competitive a atmosphere. Of course there is. I got to go tell my daughter she married a loser. Yeah. That's absurd. Because the defense was fucked up. <laughs> and he's Corey the quarterback. Dennis didn't, Corey Dennis didn't write enough letters to recruits. And he was going to fire him and tell his daughter that she married a loser. Because the defense was <laughs> fucked up. And that is what I mean about Urban Meyer was not an intentional leader. <laughs> just just insane just insane i don't know at that point if you get mad or you're just like, oh urban's just off the off the juice again. i mean looking back on it now with the way my career went i should have fucking pushed buttons because i'm a master at pushing buttons i should have pushed his buttons and got him to swing on me and then i could have whooped his ass or sued him and i'd have <laughs> i'd have a shitload of money in the bank if you bro if you beat up urban oh my god if i whooped urban meyer's ass i would be a legend <laughs> and didn't rabel choke him or was that just a, a myth nah, he just grabbed him by the shirt Okay, yeah, we've talked about that before. Yeah. All right, Zach, another mailbag question <laughs> on Jim Knowles. How yeah. long does Jim Knowles have to make this a top 20 defense? You would think that at $2 million a year, you start off with a warm seat. Yeah, um, I mean, he his seat will, will only be cool when they're a top 10 defense, right? Uh, that doesn't mean it has to be a top 10 defense this year. If they if they show improvement, if they're a top 25 defense, that will buy him a year. I mean, he's not going to get fired, right? So mm -hmm. he's got a couple years. But the expectation, Ryan Day said it in his press conference, the expectation is a top 10 defense. And if it's not that, at some point, something's got to change. Ryan Day is demanding a top 10 defense, and he will hire someone else that can give him and deliver a top 10 defense. So in year one, I think it has to be top 30, right, mm -hmm. to improve from 60th or whatever it was. It has to be top 30, and then that next year, in 2023, it's got to be a top 10 defense. It just has to. You don't pay a guy $2 million a year for a top 25 defense. You pay a guy $2 million a year to lead, lead the country in defense. And honestly, top 10 is low. It's you Ohio think? State. You need a top five defense. If you're paying a guy two mil, come on now. You could, you could go get anybody. Not anybody, but you could go get a, a quality D coordinator at a million dollars a year and get a top 10, top 15 defense at Ohio State with the talent they have. You pay a guy $2 million, it's because he's different, right? Yeah. He's the best in the country. And you can't lower your standards. 
the Ohio State is trying to win national championships. The way to do that is to have the best whatever in the country, the best facilities, the best recruiting operation, the best offense, the best defense, the best special teams, the best, not top 15, the best. And the best it can be classified as top five, in my opinion. I guess it's going to be tricky for Jim Knowles because I do think I do think the defense will improve, but top 10 I think would be hard to achieve almost because of how high power the offense is. Um, and so you would think you're going to be giving more possession to the other team and the scoring Maybe. defense may slip up a little but bit and time, more shots out there. At the same time, this offense should have no problem flipping the field in a field position battle. Mm-hmm. Like if you're t- if it's going to be high scoring games, then then that, that is a kudos or that is a credit to average defense, right? If the offense is going to score a bunch, I mean, when they get pinned back in the, you know, inside the 10, yeah, turning they should be able to get two first downs before they have to punt, right? They're not going to drive 95 yards every time, right? They're not going to drive 80 yeah. yards every time, but they're going to be so good that that field position at worst will flip. And then you're talking about the defense is playing downhill. I mean, they they have the, the offense, the opposing offense has to go 80 yards if you or 90 yards if you if you do a good job on offense and with your punt team. So they should be set up for success. Now they just have to execute. 